Doing something about Kitchard means applying the science that we know and taking some, some risks. We don't have a template to work from. This is a new territory, and all we know are the consequences of inaction, and that if we don't do something, we're going to have a lot of problems. So Kusuka National Park is located in northwestern Honduras, um, not far from the Guatemalan border. It's about 200 square kilometers of montane wet forest and cloud forest, and it possesses a, a remarkable biodiversity of all sorts of wildlife, and in particular reptiles and amphibians. It's just a very, very unique area, and it's also one that very few people know about. I was moved. It was one of the more phenomenal areas I've ever been to in the world, and I've been to most of the continents, and I've seen a lot of this world so far, and it's one of the most unique areas I've ever seen. It was like this weird mashup of like different environments and unique animals, and unique habitats, and um, it was awe-inspiring. Here in Kusuga National Park, a lot of the amphibians are infected with amphibian chytrid fungus, and for the past 10 years, annually, we've been monitoring the prevalence within the populations by swabbing the animals with skin swabs. And we've also been monitoring the amount of this pathogen in the rivers with water filtration. Chytrid fungus is a microscopic amphibian pathogen that lives in the water. It spreads through small little spores that swim around until they reach a frog and they latch onto it and burrow into its skin. And as a result of it invading the skin of the amphibians, uh, it causes issues with respiration and water balance and other important bodily functions. Uh, and basically that eventually leads to cardiac arrest and other causes of death of amphibians. It's one of the first wildlife diseases that has truly gone global by the time we knew it existed. One of the greatest issues with chytrid that makes it so severe as far as conservation is that it can affect nearly any amphibian species. So of the 7,000 known species of amphibians, any one of those could potentially go extinct from this single pathogen. And it's, it's alarming to watch these frogs disappear. So here's an adult spike thumb frog, Plectrohala exquisita in Kusuka National Park. And unfortunately, she seems to be a little bit sick. She has some unusual discoloration on her arm and her, on her elbow, which seems to be turning into a sore. And she has a lot of sloughing skin on her leg here. Yesterday, we found a Plectrohala dazipus, the other spike thumb frog species, which also showed uh, the same kind of lesions on, on one of his limbs. It seems to leave these open sores near some points of discoloration on these frogs. We're not sure exactly what's causing this. It might be related to chytrid fungus or something completely different. So that's also something that we're looking at. Martínez Ramírez el nombre. Yo tengo 82 años. Yo vivo aquí en el parque. Ha cambiado bastante el clima. Ya no es el mismo clima de antes. Porque hoy ya la cosa ya ha cambiado por causa de que viene más viento, más, más agua. ¿Ah? Más lluvia. Una lluvia así, suavecita. Nada más. Cambio del de, 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 clima y hay cambio de los animales también. Y aquí los animales ya no vienen como venían antes. Antes venían aquí los animales. Muchos animales venían. Venía el tigre, pasaba por aquí el tigre. El danto pasaba por allí, por ese bordo, sí, para allá. A hoy ya no pasa. Se han terminado muchas, muchas razas de, de ramas. Creo yo que se han terminado. Pues más poco, más poco, menos cantan. Ya no se oyen cantar mucho, como antes que cantaban bastante. A hoy ya no. 
al, al, al ir bajando la naturaleza, entonces también ellas van terminando la, la cría de ramas, ya no, hay la, ya no son las mismas, son otras, vienen otras, otra clase, y se necesita salvarlos, porque de repente se terminan. We have established the Honduras Amphibian Rescue and Conservation Center, a Head Start and Cat Breeding Program. What that means is that there are certain life stages of the frogs that seem to be more susceptible to dying from chytrid, and that's the tadpoles and the metamorphs. From the long-term work that we've done in Casuco, we've noticed that once they become adults, um, the few that do survive are then resistant. So the activities that we're doing here at Hark is basically removing the weakest animals from the park, which are the young animals, cure them of chytrid, which, which can be done in captivity, and then raise them until they're adults, uh, and then reintroduce those animals back into Casuco so they can become part of their ecosystem once again. The zoo got involved about eight years ago. Jonathan Colby um, contacted us um, saying that he needed help up in Kasuko National Park and we had the capability to help him out since we have extensive knowledge and background in uh, animal husbandry and amphibian conservation areas. Um, it was a perfect marriage between what he's finding in the wild and what we can do in captivity. So we set up operations in Lancetia, first and foremost because they gave us the area, they gave us the land, and then they offered the infrastructure that we coveted so strongly. Um, you know, they have water, they have electricity, they have protection, um, and they have beautiful grounds also. They did offer us a building to, to build our isolation rooms in, um, but it just wasn't going to meet the criteria we needed for biosecurity. Um, we noticed geckos running down the walls and skinks on the grounds and killer bees in the walls, um, and it was just fighting an uphill battle. So we needed to start from scratch and to make it our own. So we decided to use ocean shipping containers. The use of shipping containers for amphibian projects isn't a novel thing, but what's different about our project is that we actually built them up in Nebraska and then shipped them down, com nearly completed. It, it was the ultimate challenge, like there were no blueprints for this. We don't know everything about the husbandry and the natural history of these animals, so we tried to make it as versatile as possible. La Lancetía es algo muy importante para nuestro país, es el área protegida, yo diría, modelo del país. Vienen aproximadamente unos 45 mil niños a visitar el jardín de diferentes partes del país. Un aspecto importante está que se está creando acá lo que sería el laboratorio de, para estudiar los anfibios, ¿verdad? Y toda esa niñez que pasará por Lancetía serán, como decir, usuarios de esa investigación. ¿verdad? En el aula de educación ecológica tocaremos el tema de los anfibios y su importancia en todo lo que es en el ecosistema. ¿verdad? Tener el laboratorio de investigación de anfibios, aunque, se, aunque vengan de Cusuco, también nos va a permitir que los científicos del zoológico también puedan ayudarnos a investigar los anfibios que tenemos en la Reserva Biológica de Lancetilla e ir creando esa conciencia también. Entonces, para mí es algo importantísimo. Yo lo tomo como una gran oportunidad para nuestra institución y a no dudarlo, van a haber buenos resultados. The three species that we've selected to work with that hark. Uh, we're chosen based on a number of years of chytrid surveys in Kusuko. Uh, we were looking at annual infection prevalence to see how it changes, which species have the most proportion of animals affected, um, and which ones seem to be in decline as, as a result. And of those, uh, many of those turned out to be critically endangered already, uh, in particular the three that we selected. Um, two of them are endemic to Kusuko. So they're only from Kazuka National Park, nowhere else. So they're particularly at risk of a threat such as chytrid. 
in my opinion right now, the best long-term solution is to find a way to have these frogs continue to exist in their natural habitats and to continue breeding on their own and, and creating offspring which potentially may become subject to natural selection and hopefully evolve their own resistance. Although the young ones will still be susceptible, um, there will be many more of them around. So a minimally invasive method of assisting evolution and, and letting it take its course, but by providing it animals to work with. What makes our project stand apart from others is that we have an immediate reintroduction plan. Uh, most other facilities like this worldwide um, take the animals out of the environment, clean them up, get them healthy, but they don't know what to do yet with those animals. So they're basically building assurance colonies, which is important, but we have an immediate release plan. To do anything we can to help out uh, is a great honor, and um, I know it's harder to find success long term, but getting these healthy animals back into the environment is our number one priority. I am very hopeful for frogs moving forward. I mean, it's, it's a very challenging time for amphibians globally. Um, they're already coping with lots of deforestation, potentially climate change and pollution, and many other stressors, and now they have chytrid to deal with, and that's a lot to handle. But at the same time, globally speaking, and in particular with respect to humans, we've combated many gruesome diseases that are challenging to stop, difficult to monitor and, and, and control the spread of. And we've done it. And we've done it really well. And it's like, how can we not stop chytrid? We can. We've, we must. We must be able to. It's just like the research hasn't been put in for the money and the time and the effort. And that's what gets me all fired up, because it's like, there's no good reason to say we can't. Because we have so many times, you know? And, and it just makes me feel that it's because we don't value wildlife. Like, most people don't notice wildlife disappearing and don't feel a detrimental impact. Except the people that might get more diseases because there's more insects spreading malaria or dengue. But, you know, those aren't the regions that have the resources or the capacity to fix the problem. So it perpetuates. But we have the resources. Um, so I think we have the responsibility to do something. <laughs>